In today's video, we're going to do five important things. First of all, we're going to find out exactly why stick drift is susceptible on modern controllers and why you want the smallest dead zones possible. Then I'm going to show you how to measure and detect stick drift on PC using a variety of software programs. Then most importantly, how to recalibrate your thumbsticks, analog sticks, or joysticks to minimize or even completely eliminate stick drift. Then we're going to cover what to do if you are on console and do not have a PC to make these changes. And finally, what to do with your controller if you have physical stick drift that cannot be remedied via software by recalibrating. Calibration. Let's get it. The video, not stick drift. We don't want that. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywop in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've, We've tested, tested almost 100, 100 custom and premium controllers, controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. So starting with the basics, what is stick drift? This might seem incredibly elementary, like it's recess. You're wondering to yourself, what is this, the Boy Scouts? I'm an esports athlete over here. Well, to figure out how to remedy a problem, we need to fully understand what the problem is. Stick drift is when your controller is registering inputs on the analog sticks and you are not physically touching the controller. You take your fingers fully off the analog sticks and your character is still moving or looking around on screen. And why most modern controllers are susceptible to stick drift and will develop it at some time in their life point is because they're all using the same style of thumbstick module, which is very cheap mass produced units generally from a company called Alps, which has a carbon strike plate that wears down over general use. So just moving the analog sticks around, these are getting constantly worn down every single single time you move the analog sticks, then you have potentiometer sensors, which actually read or measure the inputs on your thumbsticks. And these can go out at any time for any reason. Doesn't even have to be wear and tear general use. Sometimes controllers come out of the box with stick drift, probably janky potentiometers. Now there is a very small percentage of controllers that use magnetic hall effect sensors, which break connectivity with magnets. And that is how it actually senses movement, making them far, far, far less susceptible to ever getting stick drift. But out of the dozens of controllers I have tested on this channel, there's only only been two or three that use magnetic hall effect sensors. Which implores me to make this video because we'll all suffer from stick drift at some point or another. What do you actually want or need from your analog sticks to get the best accuracy in response? Well, it is a fine balance between having no stick drift, but also having the smallest possible dead zones to where when you break neutral just ever so slightly, and I do mean just barely, put your fingers on those analog sticks, it is registering and your character is moving or aiming on screen. But as soon as you remove your fingertips completely, all movement ceases. Having the smallest dead zones to where your most finite or small movements start getting registered in combination with bumping up the in-game sensitivity about two to three clicks and increasing the height of the right stick with some kind of control freak or thumbstick extension and perhaps increasing resistance on the right stick with something like control freaks precision rings or one of the premium controllers that actually has increased thumbstick tension that is going to get you the best possible accuracy and response out of your thumbsticks. So how do we measure and detect if your thumbstick is getting stick drift? Well, the most noticeable would be if you notice your character moving or aiming when you're not touching the controller. You've got a pretty decent case of stick drift on your hands. It's kind of like the saying, if you feel thirsty, it's too late, you're already dehydrated. If you're physically moving your character without touching your controller, you got yourself some stick drift. Surprise, surprise, a lot of you have stick drift in your controllers that hasn't even been registered in game yet because it's so minute, but we're gonna remedy it today. Recalibrate those sticks for you. There is four methods for connecting a controller or gamepad to a PC. You have Bluetooth, you have a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, which is included with a lot of third-party controllers. Then if you're using Xbox controllers, you have the Xbox adapter for Windows, which uses a specific wireless frequency called Xbox Wireless, so to not get interference with other devices connected in your room. And then of course you have a wired connection via a USB-C or micro USB cable. That is the method we are going to be taking. Anytime you're doing any kind of diagnostic work, overclocking a controller, measuring the polling rate, I do recommend taking the wired method because you will get the most accurate readings and the most consistency. The first method to measure stick drift is actually built into Windows itself. On your keyboard, press Windows. Windows key plus I, and it will pop open your settings. Another way to get to settings is to pin it down here to the taskbar. If not, click on the Windows start down here and click on this little cog icon that will open up settings for you. Go ahead and type in controller into the search bar. You will see set up USB game controllers. Click on that. By double clicking on the controller or clicking properties, it will pop open this box here. If your controller is not registered and you're having issues with your controller connecting to Windows 10 PC, I do have a video linked in the description below to get you all squared away. Now this is a diagnostic tool. So as I move my left analog stick, 
stick, my right analog stick, or press any of the buttons that is all registered here. And as you can see on that X rotation, which is going to be the horizontal axis of aiming on the right analog stick, it's not centered. It is showing a little bit of out of the box stick drift. Let's confirm that with Gamepad Tester. This is a website called Gamepad Tester. Go ahead and plug in your controller and then press a button on the face and that will wake up your controller and allow it to be registered on this website. So this is confirming our original speculation. We're getting a little stick drift on that right stick. I'll zoom in so you can see properly, but that black dot is not dead centered. And also under axis two, as you can see, we're getting a 0 0.08, 0 0.1, which is not good. You want this as close to zero as possible. Other than measuring stick drift, you can also do what's called testing the circularity, which is going to get your thumbstick accuracy. You click that box and rotate your analog stick slowly in a circle, and it will show you if there are any dead zones where your controller simply is not reading your inputs properly. Those red or pink areas, not good. What you want to see is blue and maybe a little bit of purple. Now, there is virtually nothing you can do for circularity or thumbstick accuracy, but we can do quite a bit to recalibrate for stick drift. Almost every controller should be recognized on this website, but if it is not, if you're on a PS4 or 5 controller, launch a program called DS4 Windows. I do have a separate tutorial of this program, but its main purpose in life is to spoof your PC into thinking that a PlayStation 4 or 5 controller is an Xbox 360 controller, allowing it to be recognized by many more programs and games and giving it more compatibility. Another way to measure stick drift is going to be in the Steam Launcher. Go over here to Big Picture Mode, which is a console-like experience that allows you to use your controller much like you're browsing a console. Come over here to the settings icon. Go over here to controller settings. Make sure all these boxes are checked. Come down here to your detected controller, which is being recognized as a 360 controller. Even though this is a generic third party, it's a Fly Digi Apex 2. And come over here to calibrate. And as you can see, this is representing two things for us, stick drift and dead zone. These red dots, which become black whenever our reticle is within them, is going to be your dead zone, i.e. you're moving your analog stick and your controller isn't recognizing or registering those inputs. And we're also seeing from that little blue dot, a little bit of stick drift on that right stick. Little on the left as well, but much more pronounced on the right. Now, what you can do is grab these sliders right here and adjust your dead zone. Now, what you want is the smallest possible value while that little blue reticle is still within this dot, turning it black. If that turns red, you need to bump up your dead zone just a skosh until it turns black. Now, you can also do a full auto calibration, which I'll show you right now. It warns you, hey, buddy, you sure you want to do this? Calibration is only recommended if you're experiencing poor trackpad, joystick, or accelerometer performance. Accelerometers, motion sensing, like the controllers that have gyroscope, or trackpad, that's something like the Steam controller, or the Steam Deck handheld PC. We're actually calibrating right now. Push the left stick to a side and let go. Push a different direction each time. You have 10 presses remaining. Bam, 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 bam. Same thing on the right stick. Bam, bam. You have to make the sound effects or it won't work properly. Bam, kablam, whammy, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Calibration complete. And as you see, it did its best job to do exactly what we could do manually by adjusting our dead zones. Now, something to keep in mind, this is only going to work with Steam. So if this is your game launcher of choice, you play all your PC games through here, awesome. But a lot of people don't. You might have multiple game launchers such as Epic and Origin or shoot, maybe you have games installed directly to your Windows desktop and you're launching them from there, then this is going to do absolutely nothing for you. We need to use another program to calibrate. Back over here in Windows Controller Properties, go to Settings, click on Calibrate, and it opens up this wizard here. Next, leave the D-pad centered. Press a button on the controller. This very first window says press all the D-pad's corners. They're actually talking about the left analog stick over here. Go ahead and click Display Raw Data, and it will show you your X-axis, which is horizontal, and your Y-axis, which is vertical. Go ahead and move around in a circle, and then click Next. Z-axis calibration, this is going to be for your triggers. I like to click on display raw data so I can see what the hell is going on. Hold down your left trigger and your right trigger. Now, these aren't linear. They're 0 to 100 because they're mechanical mouse-like switches. But if you have linear triggers on a standard controller, it will reflect the exact percentage you're squeezing. Hit next. Now, X rotation is going to be the horizontal axis. And as you can see, when I'm not pressing anything, it's sitting at 45%. So we're going to move it left and right, back and forth. Y is going to be your vertical axis with the right stick. So we're going to move up and down, fully up and down. Hit next. And as we can see, this did something. Z axis is now perfectly at 50% as opposed to earlier, it was at 45. So that's good. Then go ahead and hit apply. And if for some reason you did this calibration wrong and it actually made your stick drift worse, go over here to settings and hit reset to default and that will undo your calibration. So the next program we're going to showcase is Rewaz. This can be free. However, you can get up to $25 if you start adding additional packs or plugins for it. But for recalibrating the sticks to minimize dead zone, we can actually do that for free or you can get their premium services for seven or 14 days for free. Recalibrate your stick drift that way before the trial ends. This is a very in-depth program for remapping virtually any controller and I will have a separate tutorial.
real on it. But for our needs today, if you look at the left or right analog stick, don't hover over the middle. This is simulating clicking down L3 or R3 or pushing down the buttons on the sticks, but one of the directions over here. So we'll say down on the left analog stick. Go ahead and click on advanced over here. Put you up there in the corner, big dog. There we go. Now you can customize your response or sensitivity curves over here by coming to custom. Sure enough, making your own sensitivity curves, even changing things like the vertical and horizontal axis and the rotation. Let's go ahead and default all that back to normal. But over here in the bottom right, this is going to be for your stick drift. As you see, this gray area is your dead zone where nothing is being registered. And this bronze or amber ring on the very outside is going to be your maximum input. Now you can grab any of these sliders and drag them as you can see. And if you click on this wrench icon, it is going to give you precision adjustment. So if you want to type in a specific value, you can do that here. In addition to that little feature, if you click on this Xbox icon over here, currently this controller is being recognized as a virtual 360 controller. As you can see, you can toggle between the left and right analog stick. I would recommend leaving this box, use same settings for X and Y axis, leave that checked. And you can reduce the deflection just slightly to where you're getting minimal inputs before you're actually getting stick drift. Clicking on the wrench icon, you're also going to have precision adjustment of course, if you want to type in a specific value. So that is awesome. The amount of control you have with Rewazd over here, where you can set up literally keybinds for double pressing, long pressing, pressing a combination of buttons to actually do things in your windows, such as change songs in Spotify or change scenes in your OBS or whatever. You can literally control your entire stream with just a controller using Rewazd. Again, I'll do a separate tutorial on this program as it is very in-depth. Now, DS4 Windows specifically works with PlayStation 3, 4, and 5 controllers. So I've got a DualSense plugged in here, which you can see is recognized right here. Let's go ahead and full screen this bad boy. Click on edit. And then in this first tab axis configurator, you have LS, which is your left stick and RS, which is your right stick. You can change your dead zone type from radial to axial. I would leave this alone. Over here in dead zone, as you can see, we're at 0.08. I'm not sure what this unit of measurement is, perhaps millimeters, but you can adjust this on the fly and even type in your own specific value. Dead zone is going to be the very minimum input before your controller starts registering and maximum zone is how close you get to the outskirts of your gates to where if you want your character to be running full speed when you're only pressing the stick halfway, then you would change this max dead zone to 0.5 as opposed to 100% or 1.0. Does that make sense? Now, I don't like that there's no visual representation of your stick drift when you're tuning it in here. You just have to play around by adjusting these values ever so slightly and then entering a game and seeing if it's making a difference. It'd be great if we had some visual representation like we did with Rewazd and Steam. Now, what's beneficial about this is as long as you're leaving DS4 windows running in the background, no matter what game you play, doesn't matter what launcher you're in, maybe you just launch it directly off your desktop, these dead zone settings are going to take effect. Same thing if you're running Rewazd and you leave that running in the background, so it's taking effect on your controller. So these fixes will work no matter where you're playing games, as opposed to the Steam launcher, the auto calibration we did earlier, that's only taking effect if you're playing games in Steam. I know I said this about Rewazd, but it's also applicable to DS4 Windows. I will be making a separate video or tutorial because this is a very in-depth program where you can do a whole hell of a lot, including constantly controlling the RGB lighting of your touchpad. Swipe on the touchpad on your PlayStation controller and control Windows. You can even overclock the Bluetooth polling rate, giving you a faster connection via Bluetooth. A whole lot can be done in this program. Stay tuned for that. Maybe subscribe. I'd recommend it. It can't hurt anything. That's for sure. And once you've made the adjustments to your dead zones, go ahead and click apply over here. And you've got to keep this program running because if you try and close it, you will get this warning. Hey, this is going to disconnect all your controllers. All the settings you've made are not going to take effect. So all these dead zones you changed on your thumbstick, unless you have DS4 windows running in the background, it's not going to do anything for you. Now, all these methods for measuring and recalibrating stick drift are specific to the PC. They're all based on a program or software suite that has to be running in the background to let the controller know exactly how its thumbstick should perform. So just because you make these changes doesn't mean you can go use them on your console and you're going to have the same effect that you were getting on PC. That is because these controllers don't have any kind of inboard memory. Granted, a lot of premium and custom controllers do have onboard profiles that you can swap on the fly. However, that's generally just for button bindings. And there is no way to really flash a tune to the PCB or printed circuit board of a controller. So it just knows, hey, these are my new thumbstick settings. This is my new axial dead zone. It doesn't work like that. However, you're not completely screwed if you're only on console and don't own a PC. In the settings of your console, if you go under accessories or devices and then go under controllers, you can actually recalibrate your thumbsticks there. Nintendo Switch makes this very easy under the controller section on the home menu. It sure enough says calibrate the thumbsticks. And this works with both 
both the individual Joy-Cons as well as a Switch Pro controller. Not to mention most modern games, especially first-person and third-person shooters, have some type of dead zone adjustment in the in-game settings. So while you might be getting yourself more of a dead zone to where you have to apply more input before your character starts moving, you will be able to avoid stick drift where you're registering when you're not even touching the controller. Next up, a lot of premium, pro, or custom controllers have some kind of a software suite or application that you can install not only on the PC, but also on consoles as well. On Xbox, you go to the Microsoft Store, and on PlayStation, you go to the Sony App Store or whatever they call it. A lot of these programs actually will allow you to adjust things like your sensitivity or response curves, in which case you can actually reduce the dead zones right here. Finally, if none of these methods of software programs to recalibrate worked for you fixing stick drift, you might actually have to physically work on the hardware of the controller itself. I do have a video linked in the description below of two methods, one partially disassembling a controller and one leaving it fully assembled to fix stick drift on a controller, whether it's PlayStation or Xbox. Shoot, maybe Switch. Now, if those methods didn't work for you, you can replace the thumbstick modules, which requires soldering and is kind of a pain in the ass. If it's a standard or stock controller that you can buy for 40 bucks, most people at this point say screw it and just go buy a new one. You can also swap the thumbstick modules if you have a modular controller like the Thrustmaster E-Swap or the Astro C40. And yeah, this will cost you 15, 20 bucks and a few days of shipping time, but you'll be able to actually just remove the thumbstick module and pop in a new one. Not the best fix having to replace the problem rather than fix it. Hey, no more stick drift for you. Next up, I would look at the warranty of your controller and contact the manufacturer, whether that's Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, or a third-party vendor, such as Scuff, AIM, Battle Beaver, Hex, etc. Now, a lot of these companies do not cover stick drift because it's practically just considered an inevitability. It's basic wear and tear, just like having to change brake pads and tires on your car. These manufacturers think, you know, hey, well, you're, you're gonna have to replace your thumbstick modules eventually. So a lot of times they won't honor these warranties, but you talk to the right representative and you sweet talk them a little bit, put a little sugar in their bun, and sometimes they'll send you out a fresh controller. Last but certainly not least, there is a good option from Helder Game Tech over here. This is his website. He has a $15 PCB or printed circuit board that you solder onto your controller like that. And I will be doing this on the channel, by the way. And this allows you to screw these two tiny Phillips head screws to adjust the horizontal and vertical axis and basically fix stick drift. As long as, caveat right down here, the original potentiometers are not damaged. Hopefully this video achieved its goals of showing you what stick drift and dead zones are several programs or applications to read and recognize, hey, I'm getting stick drift, and a couple of programs how to recalibrate or fix stick drift, what to do if you're on console and don't have access to these PC programs, and finally, what to do if none of these calibrations work for you, and you need to get in there physically, take apart that shell, and fix your controller. This is your controller captain, signing off. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back. AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord, and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily, all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.